Welcome to the excellent. Hey everyone, welcome to the Excellently Esports Show. We are back with some more mid league season three action, and Money Moves Mac is here to have quite a fun time here with our pre show standing stonks, ladies and gentlemen. Each of the casters are going to be choosing which teams they would like to go ahead and invest in for their points potential you'll see just in a little bit the pyramid setup but each of the casters are going to be picking three teams they think are going to be picking up some wins and based on which tier they're in right now in the standings casters are going to be rewarded for going in on riskier options if they're able to pay off but we've got some titans in the top of the standings so let's see which of the teams the casters are going to be choosing tonight let's uh go in ahead and check out the rest of the squad here with me Gunjin, Icarus, and Cam joining me once again for the pre-show. Gunjin, Icarus, Cam, we had actually a match happen before the Wednesday night segment of games. Degenerates and Divine Ascension Obsidian have already played, so those points aren't going to count in favor for us this week, but it was a decisive 3-0 for Divine Ascension Obsidian. So before we go in to talking about our stonks, Gunjin, I want to hear from you first about your thoughts on the first match from week three that we've seen already. Uh... I was, before I even say, I was in on the Divine Ascension hype train way before <laughs> this, this train left the station. I have to say, I picked them, but regardless, um, I think that they had a great match versus Digitized Reformer. Again, it was kind of those bottom of the tier teams, but you have Yeah, and looking overall, Icarus, Cam, I'm also wondering for you guys, Gunjin, a lot of solid points uh, right there for you, my guy. No worries. Uh, I was really impressed by all you were talking about with saturations, roaming, and such. Icarus, Cam, I'm curious to hear from you guys uh, about a little bit about the matchup we saw earlier. Well, I'm personally super excited to see Bucky play again. Um, last week, we got to see them play, and, you know, they pulled out a couple of great victories. It was the team that, after the first week, everyone was kind of memeing. Um, but the more I see them in mid-league, the more I'm excited to watch these guys. I also got to talk to them a little bit last week, um, mm -hmm. and I just love listening to how they approach the game. Their captain, Array, is super upbeat. He's also the jungler for Bucky's. Oh, my camera disappeared, but... It's super exciting to see this team play, and I love to see, especially after last week's games, the amount of map control that these guys have. And I think if they bring that every week, every game, that they're going to be able to pull out a lot more victories than people give them credit for. I'm just and looking forward. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I'm just no, looking Cam, Cam, go ahead. I'm just looking forward to a matchup today, specifically with Ninetale, Foxonics versus Fever. I think it's going to be, I'm hoping, really hoping for a close series here. I'm hoping we're not going to have another 3-0 like we've had the past two weeks. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, and getting in to start off, uh, starting about the different teams we've all chosen for uh, our investments this uh, season. Uh we're going to be able to potentially switch around our investments a little bit in the future. But I'm going to start us off here. I'm going with what I think is the easiest investment of my life, possibly a little 401k action. I'm looking to stock up and save for the future. And I want to talk to you guys about my main team, CB Rush. I am purchasing my ticket. I am all aboard the CB Rush hype train. Rutledge, first team, all top pro. 
uh, is absolutely killing it this season. Him, Frosty, and Acid are dominating the KDA charts. They're dominating the highest damage charts, and they are here for their Revenge Road show. Gunjin, Icarus, Cam, you guys are sleeping on this squad. I think even though I'm only getting one point per win for these squads, it's going to start to add up as they keep on rolling. They already took down Bucky's 2-1. Last week was an absolute stump when they took down Degenerates Reformed. I'll talk about them later. I'm investing all over the place. But CB Rush is what I see as the team that I think is going to be doing the best consistently moving forward. They're going to be staying at the top. And I'm feeling comfortable about my investment, guys. Mac, 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 your name is Money Moves Mac. What type of money are you moving with these plays? You, you're going for such safe, you're going for dividend investments. You know that they're going to give you those points. Those one points are going to be trickling in across the split. But if I go for those big, big fish in the water, if I can buy the dip and sell the rip, Mac, well, here's the thing. Those, that money is not going to be moving as much as uh, Garen Guffett um, and his investments. <laughs> You really can't expect to be making a whole lot of money if you're just staying with safe bets. Staying in that tier one, you, you got to be making more than that. That's why I didn't vote for any of those tier one teams. All right, Gunjin, let's hear a little bit about your first team. I see, like me, you were looking to go for a little bit of a consistent option. I'm curious why you went for the No Fear Wolves. I mean, they've been around here for a while. Are you feeling good about how they started the season? Well, here's the thing, Mac. Again, I just flamed you for your 401k <laughs> investment, but I'm an old man. You know, the ARP meetings have been rough on this old soul. The bones aren't as they used to be. This caster can't carry himself as he used to. So I got to I gotta go with some safe investments. And No Fear Wolves is my safe investment for this split. They've started out magma hot. They are hot as they can ever be. It feels like the team is kind of coming all together and gelling really well. Again, I made a spicy prediction last week that Peekaboo would be the MVP of the league. I'm not going to hold anybody else on that, but I do think that he's playing at a all-pro level. I think the bot lane is gelling super well, and right now both of them are leading in excellency rating after two weeks. I think that this team is really set up to succeed, and the jungle changes, I think, have also helped as the Peekaboo now transitioning into that jungle role we're in a meta where junglers are going to be kind of ganking a lot more and farming a lot less. And that kind of benefits when you have a jungler that is so versatile as Peekaboo and laners that are so solid that can support a all pro AD carry in Epic Fail Guy. I'm excited for this investment. I think that these points are going to be rolling in. And I'm sorry, guys, don't flame me for picking on my safe investment. But Garen Guffett is going for the long haul. Garen Guffett is trying to win the entire Excellency Mid League stonks. Uh, standing stonks and that's 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 my idea for going with no fear wolves right here well mr garen guffett the prince of nepal himself he's going all in on his main man gunjin fail guy and with josh box in the support role we're potentially gonna see him live tonight but we got our show match ready to go uh so no fear wolves will have to see that dynamic bot lane pop off another time i gotta say gunjin uh that 401k is looking pretty solid icarus notably you're out of the top tier my man what's going on with some of your investments I told you, I'll say it once and I'll say it again. You don't make money if you go light on your investments here. You got to take a little bit of risk in order to make that big reward here. And like I said, Bucky's, they're going to be the risk that I'm willing to take here. I think this team could go all the way. Their, bo their boy in the jungle, Array, fantastic personality and keeps his team put together with his objective control as well. I think that he can easily pick up several more wins over the course of the next few weeks here. They already got no fear wolves out of the way in that's one of the top contending teams here, according to Gunjin, at least. But I think that as long as they're still playing against other teams at that tier two or even below them, that they're going to be taking away 2-1 and 3-0 victories every single week. Icarus going in on uh, the Bucky's Truther squad. I'm kind of here for it. Bucky's doing a lot better in the mid league than they uh, had previously done in the heavy league, picking up some dubs any which way they can, including in 3-0 fashion. I mean, 
They're doing pretty solid so far through the start. Cam, I notice a similar squad at the bottom of your list there. Do you want to talk to me a little bit about how you were going in on Bucky's as well? Yes, I am definitely agreeing here with Icarus a little bit. I am definitely on the Bucky's hype train going for <laughs> one of these two point teams here. We watched them on stream last week get their really nice looking 3 0. I mean, they won every game basically 30 minutes or less with the. We saw them, they were able to play from behind well they were able to close out with the lead really well as well so when a team can play from both behind and ahead and find a win as well as they were last week i think that is going to be a team to find lots of points from like the the little bit of the non-safe investments coming from you in uh you and icarus cam so the way it works just uh for everyone joining in coming into the stream so we've got our three teams picked out you guys can see which of our caster preferences we're holding on to through week three and for each win that the teams get based on their kind of level here. That's how many points we as casters are going to be able to get. Feel free to hit us up on Twitter if you guys think you have better portfolios than the casters up here to see how uh, your stonks are going to be doing. Disclaimer though, DGENs versus Divine Ascension Obsidian not going to be counting for this week. I may have gone for CB Rush at the start, but I'm going to diversify the portfolio a little bit. I want to talk to you guys about a little team called the death card academies who uh i believe have been making some serious noise here in the mid league unexpectedly last week taking a game actually two games off of fever going two and one in that block three series against the squad now fever a very solid team so i gotta be thinking in terms of my investments well if you're able to take down fever i'm pretty excited about how this team's potential is looking now a lot of things are going to be shifting up throughout this season but i think they've got the deck stacked in their favor for popping off they like to play aggressive picks like Pantheon in the mid lane. And I think the Death Card Academy squad is going to be looking good to keep up that momentum for the upcoming weeks. I feel good about this investment. I'm curious uh, how the other casters are feeling about this team. I think it's, I mean, I like the investment, Mac. I think that you're, you, your head's in the right place in terms of Death Cards having that upset potential maybe being able to break into the top tier it is a it's a bargain buy you're going for the bargain bin buy and i like the pick i do want to flame a little bit on uh icarus's pick icarus as a fellow member of the arp club we're all again our bones are old we're over here Icarus really picked Bucky's Icarus. We got to stay with the 401k plan. You have to pick a tier one team. I don't want to, I don't want to flame another caster, but Icarus is pick right there. I know that Cam has time. Cam has time to invest, but Icarus picking <laughs> Bucky's that is risky for a for an old head like myself and Icarus out here. I've lived my entire life playing safe already, Gungeon. You got to start living at some point. You can't always play it safe if you want to make those those real big changes in your life. You want to really reach for them. You gotta keep making some risks. You gotta keep playing it unsafe. You gotta have some fun with it, Gungeon. Come on, you can't just keep voting Icarus, safe every single no time. time. We, we don't got plenty no of time. time. We don't have enough time, Icarus. My camera We're... thinks I don't have enough time. No. Our, our, <laughs> the ranks, of, our ranks have been steadily falling. I used to be diving, and now I can barely make it to plat two <laughs> on a good day. This isn't. This isn't time to be going risky. We gotta go low and slow. And transitioning it to my pick, I'm going low and slow. I think this is my bargain bin buy. Fever. They got knocked down last week, but again, a a little bird told me, and that little bird was a very loud bird named Zongi. Told me that he got unlucky <laughs> last week. It is not his fault unlucky doesn't happen again they got just lucky and you know what that means that means i can buy a tier one team at a tier two price that's why i'm going to be picking fever here i think that this week even though cam is really high on nine tailed fox i think that fever will be able to pick up either a two one or a three oh i believe in this team i think the top side is really strong i believe in stubby i think his champ pool fits really well for what the meta is transitioning into with a lot of tanks and a lot of map mobility especially in those early levels when early game junglers are kind of starting to pop up as well i think that their roster is kind of 
pretty solid in the next two weeks with Ninetailed Fox this week and Bucky's, who did have a great performance last week, but did have times where, especially in draft, they were kind of getting outdrafted. And against a better team, I feel like if they get outdrafted and give up a lot of those power picks like the Rumble, the Tristano, then better teams can punish. And I think that Fever is that better team. So I think that they will have either a 5-1 or a 6-0 in the next two weeks. So for that reason, I'm going to be buying this dip. People are sleeping on my man Zongi, <laughs> but Zongi is one of those top three junglers. So I'm buying the dip and maybe I'll sell the rip or maybe I'll just, you know, I'll just let it ride. I'll just hold it until I'm an old, old man that can barely make it out of platform. But until then, I'm riding with my Fever pick. <laughs> gunjin has got fever fever in the standing stonks game. Icarus, I see in the middle of your portfolio there, you've got a similar card choice as I do. I'm curious, man, are you are you a Death Cards Academy truther as well? I am, in fact, a Death Cards Academy <laughs> truther out here, Mac Dewey. I think that this team is getting slept on. I would normally say that the other team here is a Shadow Blade Slash that is being slept on, but they're in Tier 1, so they can't be getting slept on. Death Cards Academy, though, they're the ones that nobody's been really taking a look at. I think that after their last week of games, especially when they got lucky versus Fever, they came up with a 2-1 win playing something as insane as Vayne in the bot lane. Like, you don't pull out those kinds of victories if you're not able to play that style of champion and Vayne has always been one of the harder play style uh, a Vayne carry comp has always been one of the harder play styles to pull away with so if you're able to pull out W after W with this Vayne pick and it seems to be quite working quite strongly here for Death Cards Academy well, sure, you, then you got to start banning out the vein, but that opens up so many other options here for Death Cards Academy because now you're leaving the more meta style champions open. You have the Varus that's still available, or you're leaving up some kind of uh, power pick in the bottom lane, like the uh, the Bard that I know Cam is a huge fan of. Uwu Cthulhu can also play himself a mean Bard or Pike, so it's a hyper aggressive bottom lane here from Death Cards Academy is pulling them out some wins that I don't think are as lucky as Fever claims them to be. Hey, Icarus, I'm agreeing with the investment here. Cam, I'm noticing on your end, even though it's a long way from me on the opposite side of the screen, you've got a team in the middle of your portfolio there that has kind of gone under the radar for us in the second tier of squads, the middle of the pack right now in the standings. Elventus Amber not having the best showing on stream last week. How are you feeling about them moving forward? Yeah, I mean, I don't know why more people didn't pick them. Like, guys, <laughs> I know we watched them go 0-3 last week, but, I mean, they won really hard in week one, and they were going against Bucky's last week. I mean, Bucky's is kind of insane. So I'm hoping, I'm praying, I'm hoping that they're going to get me some more points here because, like, if I'm getting points on a team that no one else has picked, then I'm the only person getting those points. And then there's oh. also there's also the thinking of they do have better chemicals, right? Better Chemical so far has 100% Bard ban rate against him. If that Bard ever gets through, we have the secret unleashed potential of the Bard, and that never loses. I have complete faith. Complete fade, faith in the Bard Bard. 100% ban rate uh, for a reason. We'll have to see if Better Chemicals there in the bot lane for Alventus Amber is ever going to be able to get his hands on a pick like that. A lot of playmaking potential uh, that he's been known for to pop off with. I want to go to my last pick really quick here. The final round for us here as casters making our case for the portfolios here in the standing stonks game. I am still a Degenerates Reformed Truther and Believer. Zephyr said it best last week. Guys, the comeback story is obvious. There is no way the Light League champs aren't going to be having a shot here to come back in the mid league. They just got to make the sixth seed to once again make the Cinderella story come through. And that's all I'm hoping for. That's all I think they can manage and really pull off here as the season continues. Adderall really solid in the top lane. And it may be a risky investment. I'm getting four points, though, per win. I like those odds, guys. I like that potential uh, value there that I'm going to be generating. We'll have to see how long I actually sit on the degenerate stock. I'm avoiding a tough week 
as they got o 3 uh, by Divine Ascension Obsidian, but I believe the week four power spike in the post week four power spike is coming soon for this squad. Well, I hope that you have diamond hands, Mac, because you're, uh, if you're holding on to the Jezra 4 for more than a week, then uh, <laughs> God bless to you. <laughs> I, I have to say, on my end, though, you know, Garen, Garen Guffett, the legendary investor of all things Prince of Nepal. Mid League, Prince of Nepal himself, <laughs> just all the names that you can give me. I have a team that I have faith in, and they have tried and true pedigree. I'm even going to whip out the Garen Guffett accent. Well, here's the thing, Gladys. Divine Ascension Obsidian. I said almost Ruby, but you know why I said Ruby? Because last split they had JDK. This man has moved around so many positions that he can't even figure it out anymore. But he's playing the AD carry, and that is my favorite position. And as a as an old timey investor, I'm 65. My hands aren't where they used to be. I can barely play any AD carry. I got to resort re, uh, resort to Senna in my ranked game so I can pick up any sort of wins. Um, but I'm investing in Divine Assist Ruby Obsidian. Why? Because they have JDK. He's a tried and true rock for this team. I interviewed him in week number one, and he told me they have all-star aspirations for this team. I like that they're what their roster is composed of. You can already see I had picked this pick before the games that happened, so I would have gotten my 12 points, but no protest because I'm okay. I believe in the boys. I think they will make a run for that top six seed. And I think when they do, four points per win, that is free money for Garen Guffett. Garen Guffett is going to the moon. Hold Divine Ascension Obsidian stocks. Hold them with your diamond hands. And that's all I got, boys. Bury them in the backyard. Keep them safe and secure. <laughs> Garen Guffett feeling good about Divine Ascension Obsidian. Icarus, though, I want to go away from you, away from Garen Guffett. I know he's got his 401k all set up. He's going to the moon later on with Elon Musk. Icarus, talk me through your last team sitting in the portfolio. First of all, Garen Guffett, I don't you, I don't appreciate you talking trash on my main girl Senna out here. She is strong, <laughs> she is powerful, and she is able to carry herself, all right? I agree. I'm all we'll too. Pass. But you can't if you can't beat them, join them is what I say. You just got to start playing the easy stuff and start carrying your teams for those free stonks here. And for that, I got to come back to Gungeon and say, I believe in what he has to say here, at least a little bit in that fever is going to be my final stonk here. I was going to go with Divine Ascension Obsidian as well. But after finding out that their games were going to count, I really got to be making some money. So Gungeon should probably think about changing his last pick here if he's trying to go slow and steady in order to make out with some bank but fever coming into this week eh, they got lucky last week or didn't get lucky last week but i think that this week they have a fairly easy matchup for themselves going in today versus none other than ninetale fox onyx and i hate to be the one to say it but a little birdie told me that we are going to be coming across some roster swaps in this today's series and that really is what cements the idea for me that fever is going to just have that team advantage of being able to have the unified play together this week and i'm hoping that it really was just luck last week that caused them to lose because this week i'm putting my faith in them in order to make me that easy bargain money the fever fever is spreading through the casters icarus going in on the zongi squad as well can't blame you i'm excited to see that interview in just a little bit but cam last stock to talk about here you're going in on the fox boys talk us through that stock choice Man, you really got to diss my nine tail face comics. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> no face. No face. Man, I, I, I made this pick before the Degenerates game happened yesterday. So up until that point, nine tail was the only team in the lower third to have a win. So my line of thinking was, well, if they already have a win and every win in the future is going to count as four points. Why would I not pick them? And then the game today, I'm they're gonna take a win. They're gonna take a win. You guys don't believe they're gonna take a win. <laughs> and then I'm gonna get that four points that no one else will have so far. So I'm looking for it. I'm hoping. I think Cam has been blinded by bards and no. uh, poor choices. <laughs> no. There's Garen no such Guffett, thing. Garen Guffett has invested into Fever and he is proclaiming that Fever will win this matchup, even if it's a two one. <laughs> 
Predictions going to be talked about in just a little bit. Icarus and Cam going to be on the analyst desk for us tonight. You'll be catching me and Gunjin on the Rift in just a little bit. That's going to be the end of our pre-show. Let us know on Twitter in Twitch chat who you agree with, who you disagree, who you would be investing in, putting uh, which teams you're going to be placing in your portfolio potentially as the season is going to be progressing. Don't click out of that browser just yet. We've got an Icarus interview with Zoggy coming up right now. All right, welcome back to week three of interviews here with me, Icarus. Tonight, I'm joined on the desk by none other than Zongi from Fever. How are you feeling tonight, my man? I'm feeling all right. You know, tough week, but nothing new. <laughs> tough week, yeah. We'll get to that in a little bit, but first I want to start by asking you to introduce your little, yourself a little bit. Um, you know, your name, your role that you play for the team, and uh, how long have you been playing League for? Uh, okay, sure. So, Zongi, um, Jungle on Fever, uh, currently inting, um, and then I played League ever since, like, Season 2. Curious, how long have you been playing competitively? Is that something you did before your break, or is that something you just picked up as you came back into the game? I picked that up in summer of 2020. So, I was in the game for, like, six months. I used to be hard stuck bronze started actually using my brain, got to gold, and then I started playing competitively, into through the, those years, and then I played more seriously competitive in meta shift in um, December. Um, I also want to know, what is it that you bring to your team in terms of personality? I know you said you're the jungler, but who's who on your team is the like in-game leader, who's the out-of-game leader, and what do you personally bring to the table? Uh, I think I'm like the, I'm like the guy who makes sure everyone's on the same page, right? Like, I, I will ask everyone what our plan is. I'll give my opinion on what we should do. And then our ADC, Zara, he'll typically call it. If not, then it's our support rise. He wants to call um, certain plays too. And then I am also the one who has to keep things light. So I'll curse my teammates out whenever they steal my jungle camps or, <laughs> you know, take any gold from me, especially with this new jungle meta. So Oof. I got to keep them on their toes. You got to put it back in their place. Make sure they're not taken away from the jungle carry meta exactly <laughs> let them know what it means to be on a team with you no coming from a 3-0 in week one to a 1-2 versus one of the teams that you were trash talking how how are you guys handling are you guys still pretty high in the spirit are you guys concerned uh you guys taking it in stride here's the thing i think most people don't realize this team of fever two of the players have been together the entire time fever has been in like together i think two years me the support and the mid laner are all brand new. We've had two or three scrims since we started playing together. We had one scrim before our first week of matches, and we've had zero scrims in between week one and week two. So people that say that, you know, we suck, Death Cards Academy got really lucky. Um, they caught us when the, old, the other Fever roster is like finishing their focus um, finals. Mm -hmm. and so we don't have time to scrim and they caught us after like you know we're all getting each other's personalities down and um we like we won game one pretty easily we just waited for scaling and it was like they didn't know what to do they didn't have any macro and then we all tilted and mental boomed game two and three so it's just easy for them and they ask they act like it's humbling and shit and and tell me to imagine it's a humbling experience but it's like they're still gonna you know get knocked down by every other team and the more fever scrims, the more we're going to beat, like, CB Rush or No Fear Wolves or anything. Like, I'm not worried at all. And nobody on our team is. Um, you sound pretty confident. Are you guys worried at all about Ninetale Fox Onyx? Did you guys have anything specifically planned for them? Or are you guys just going into this, like, we're the better team. We're just going to play our game and win. We're all individually better. There's no question. It's going to be a stomp. Um, we'll come back 3-0. and You know, we're not really worried. We thought they might be kind of good because we thought Eleventus was good, and then Eleventus hinted, and now it's like, well, okay, Nine Tails not that good either. I mean, everyone can beat Degenerates, but I mean, Nine Tailed, Eleventus, Obsidian, bottom tier, so I'm not too worried. Is there one team that you're afraid Bro, of? Bro, Bucky's, that team should be Light League, okay? And Degenerates, they should be in a Silver League. So those two teams are already out. You know, 
the other mid-tier teams, they might make playoffs. Who knows? Um, CB Rush, No Fear Wolves. No Fear Wolves had have had have had like the easiest week one and two, and they act so ego, like they're egoing us so hard, and it's like you guys are gonna get dumpstered once you start facing better teams. And then CB Rush, like, dude, Rutledge is a joke. Like that, that guy, like he said his week one was a fluke, and we said our week two was a fluke just because he said so. Our week two, we actually have a reason. His week, his week, like one. That guy doesn't know what he's talking about. That guy, that guy is, uh, you know, the leader of CB Rush, and we came in worried about them um, at the start because they have a good reputation. Fever's fought them again, like before. They scrimmed them before. They have Acid. Acid's, Acid is the only reason I think CB Rush has a chance of like winning this league. Um, their bot lane is bad. Their mid laner is okay. Um, no Fear Wolves has a mid laner that's like egoing this entire league harder than I am. So <laughs> I don't know. I'm not really worried. I think we get a couple more scrims in. It's going to be a wipe. And, you know, Fever will be on the top by like week four or five. Yeah, I know that Jungle just went through a huge rework in this last patch. How are you feeling after uh, week two might have been part of the reason? Uh, was the jungle changes uh, yep. hit hit that night? So, how are you feeling now that you've had a week under your belt to deal with all these all these jungle changes? Farming junglers, awful. Would not play them. Mm -hmm. um, it's all about assassins, ganking junglers, tanks. Low econ junglers are gonna be your best suit, or a jungler who can just easily snowball off kills. I think it this pool actually fits acid really well. He's an assassin player as well. I have a lot of assassin champs like Kha'Zix, Rek'Sai um, that I like to pull out. I haven't seen too many other assassin junglers. I don't know what Peekaboo plays. I know he played Kindred once. Um, but yeah, I'm not too worried overall. Final shout out. What are you personally hoping to get out of playing an excellency? And what are your goals just playing on a competitive team in general? Uh, I don't know. The money's there, but... I don't really care about the money. I kind of want, I kind of want to be able to prove like I'm a worthwhile jungler. You now all these teams saw me last season on dark side. Um, they saw us not even make playoffs, so they flamed me. They're like, "Oh, dude, you were so easy last season." I'm on a team that is very competent, all individually talented, and I kind of want that redemption arc there. Um, I really want, <laughs> I really want to put No Fear Wolves in their place. I would love it <laughs> if like we're the la like if we're playoff matches or finals matches because I just want to be the one to crush them. Uh, <sighs> because God, those egos! Oh my God, you know CBR <laughs> would be a fun final match because it'd be more lighthearted. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I just I, I want a fun I want a fun competition. I want I want there to be stakes on the line. I don't want it to be, you know, just like oh you're playing for a prize pool. I want there to be ego and like um reputation on the line i think that's the biggest thing i love it that's that's the kind of personality i'm looking for you love to see not just the prize pool because the prize pool is cool you know but it's yeah. really about making a name for yourself getting better at the game and showing that you deserve your spot in a competitive team um final for shout sure. outs anyone that you want to give a shout out to any social media you want to plug you want to what have people follow you on twitter yeah. or twitch go go follow my twitch um i think it's zongi 11 um, I never stream, but, you know, give me some followers. Uh, I don't know. I'd like to thank my thank my team. They're pretty good. Um, I don't know their social medias. League of Lotus Twitter, that's good. That's our org. Um, so you'll figure out all. If you ever want to join our org after you see every single, you know, Lotus team, take every single light league, heavy league, mid league. Um, you know, that's where you're going to have to reach out to. And I think that's it. All right. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Longy, for joining me on the interview today. It was a pleasure getting to talk to you. Yep. Thanks for the interview.